And we're live. We are live, and it is a different bat time on the same bat channel. We're going to tell you all about it. We have a bunch of changes and a bunch of crazy things. Obviously, it looks different. Uh, so let's kick it off. What's up, y'all? We are uh, both here. And after a very long hiatus of not being, like, face on camera, Leslie's back. For those of you who are, like, super true OG, we, um, pro you I've probably remember this. this. Many times. We've done this many times. Leslie actually used to be on with me every week. And she used to do what she's been doing, running the questions and doing all the moderating and all that sort of stuff. Um, and it's made it really awesome and efficient. And we, well, just some stuff with our other channel and everything. We just decided to really focus on this one and try to make it better. So um, we are going to get to some questions on Patre from Patreon and from, um, from YouTube. YouTube. Thank you. But we want to take care of some housekeeping first because there are some, a, a bunch of crazy things that have happened this week. The, the number one biggest thing is right now, uh, last week's show is available as an audio-only podcast. And so what we're going to do uh, from now on, as long as people think it's awesome, is we are going to go ahead and strip the audio out of these live things and we're going to release them as a podcast. Now, I'm, I'm working on... Apple. Apple Podcasts is always a pain. They take the, they're annoying to deal with. But we're already on Spotify. We're already on Google Podcasts. Uh, we're already on Breaker, like a whole bunch of other podcast platforms. So there's a link in the description of this video that takes you to Anchor, actually, but then you can look at all of your pod, wherever you listen to a podcast and you can check it out there. That way, if you want to listen to the replays, as a podcast instead of you know tomorrow at work or whatever then you can do that so or in the car or you know whatever so uh i'm super super stoked that that's happening also the obvious thing that you're probably figuring out is it is 8 p.m on a thursday night instead of 5 p.m on a thursday night we did a survey on our youtube one of those polls and 8 o'clock p.m. was the most popular time. And what I found out is cumulatively, the later times in general were more popular. Um, people wanted, you know, we have a lot of people in California and Oregon and Texas and like Colorado and earlier time zones that they might still be at work at 5 o'clock. So we we're hoping to be able to accommodate more of you. To be able to watch it live, number one. And number two, uh, maybe reach some new folks that have never seen us in this time slot. So we're really stoked about that. The other thing is that we moved our Tuesday videos to Monday. Uh, that has always been the intention to have them on Monday. But we had a period of time. Uh, Dewey. Doug Santanello. Thank you so much. Matt said to start your chat off. Sweet. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you very much. Um, so thank you so much for the, the super chat. Uh, I appreciate that. Oh, wait. So does that mean Matt and Chris and everybody are, are watching? There are a lot of people coming over. I mean, I'm really impressed. They are like, I came because... Matt said so. I just came from Texas Toast. Um, <laughs> awesome. Yeah. So for those of you that are not familiar with our channel, um, many of you are, but for those of you that are not, we do guitar stuff. We talk about how to fix them, how to work on them. Dylan talks tone. That's what the thing is. But this Thursday night thing is really fun because it's actually a live um, Q&A. So what we do is we prioritize... Uh, 
you can join Patreon uh, at the lowest level, or you can join YouTube, the little join button down there at the lowest level, and uh, you can put questions in at any time. Super chatting to you. Uh oh. Thanks. Thanks, Ed. I appreciate that. Dylan, you you outkicked your coverage for sure. Yeah. And we do hope we're reaching more people. So yeah. we mentioned 8 o'clock was the most popular. The next being 8.30 and 9 o'clock. But by starting at 8 o'clock, which was the winner, by the way, we're also going to be able to catch the 8.30 and 9 o'clock people. So it yeah. was like this vast majority. We were really hoping to be able to accommodate more people. I did get some messages from some folks who were bummed out because they were like in Europe and stuff. And now that puts it at like 2 o'clock in the morning for them. But... Uh, and it bummed me out too because it was like Zoltan and a couple other people that are like I mean really awesome folks. Yeah. So two a.m. in Denmark and I'm still working. So oh, we have somebody. So here. he's in Denmark. Oh, okay. We were just talking we were just about talking that. about you last night and your crazy custom pickups. Yes. So the way this works is, uh, we are going to an answer some questions from Patreon and from our YouTube members. Um, we prioritize those every week. Um, and then what we do is when we get done with those, then we get back into this here chat. Um, and of course, super chats being priority, but then we try to get through as many of them as possible in a reasonable amount of time, which brings me to my other new thing for the week is dozens of you over the last couple years have said, please timestamp your lives. It is an absolute including her. <laughs> it is an absolute royal pain in the buttocks to timestamp like 50 questions. Uh, for last week's hour and a half show, it took me over an hour to do it. But I believe that it's worth it because it makes it easier for you to watch it. So I'm going to take the time and I'm, I'm just going to do it. So um, I'm really stoked uh, to be able to share those things with you. So new time on Monday. New time on Thursday, podcast, holy crap, and timestamps. So we're trying to up the game, man. Um, we really are trying to to make this thing better and make it easier to access information. And also to hopefully, when you watch these videos, and I'm actually timestamping all the videos, not just the lives. So as you watch these videos, hopefully it will inspire you to pull little pieces out of various things and, and do stuff, you know, um, you're going to see in our next few videos. Well, the, for those of you that have seen the early release stuff that we put up there on Patreon this week, there's some really good content there. And so I'm stoked to be able to, uh, make it easier for everyone to watch. So everybody said they're here because Matt told them to be here and this was the place to be. Matt and Chris said this channel is all about how awesome Chris is. It so is. So just, just in case you're wondering, that's why we're here. It's because Chris is awesome. Okay, so should we, before we get into the Patreon questions, should we just talk about how awesome Chris is just for a minute? We can do that. Um, Chris is really awesome. I mean, do we really need to say anything more than that? I don't know. Chris is really awesome. I he, like Chris. He is really awesome. He is really awesome. Yeah. Hi, my name's Matt, and I say stuff really loud, and I actually, uh, I build guitars, and if you can't build guitars, watch YouTube instead, or whatever I say at the end of every video. Yeah. She just says, he just says that all the time. Yeah. No matter what I say really loud at any video... Yeah. That's that's what happens. We do really like them. We now. do. We love them. It cost me like 30 bucks to get those made. That's how much we love them. We love them a lot. <clears throat> so anyway. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> back to... <laughs> back to uh, reality. <laughs> oh my God. Can and, you do it now? I don't know. Okay, so while we're digressed, everybody's talking about where's the beer because they just came from Texas Toast, so we're not beer, big beer well, drinkers here. Here's here's what happens. But we can drink it this time. We've got a new thing that has happened. For the last few weeks, people have put Super Chats in 
and told us what to buy with the money uh, as far as Speaking drinks. Speaking of money. Super chat. I didn't even see it. Canadian beer money from Ivan. Uh-oh. So it looks like next week we have to buy some Canadian beer. See, this is what's happened. So the week before, uh, the week before, Jeffrey said, please go buy some beer. So we went and bought some some stout beer. It was delicious. And it was amazing. And then in the same week, Jeff, another Jeff, said, uh, here's for the fancy liquor fund. So this is uh, Tire Fire uh, whiskey, single malt whiskey. So he put a super chat in um, and said, hey, go buy some fancy something. So we did that. And so that's what we're going to do. We're going to let you pretty much... Now, she's probably going to always drink the same thing, but you can pretty much push what... I'll try lots of stuff, so within reason. Um, so there we go. Let's get to some questions, because that's why everybody's here. We're going to go over to Patreon first. This is the period of time where we answer Patreon questions. So, <clears throat> these folks have asked these over the last week. Actually, I put a, fo uh, a post up every Wednesday. Uh, Charles says, I'm working on a Malibu Frankenstrat. And uh, he's having he's trying to figure out how to line up the truss rod, I believe, on the neck side. This is a really long post. So um, he said, should I move the mounting location of the neck as long as I don't end up really close to the edge and maintain the scale length? Or should I relieve the body and use the original screw placement? Um, so <clears throat> if it takes, if you're trying to access the, the screw for the truss rod, um, I would just do that. I would not move the neck because if you move the neck, you, it's possible that you will have major problems or it's probable that you'll have major problems with scale length. So I would definitely not move the neck. I would leave it where it is. Um, <clears throat> Definitely leave it where it is. Uh, let's see. Jeff says, so I was looking at the strat body I that I... interrupt to again. Oh, super chat. chat. Cool. What did they say? Cheap whiskey bottle. Oh, thanks, man. That is from music stuff. Actually, I can Thank get a pretty you. good bottle of whiskey yeah. for 20 bucks. There's a couple of things. Uh, yeah, definitely. We might have to... We might have to have... Like keep a little side thing weekly where we actually review the stuff that we bought mm, we that might have to fun. do that <clears throat> okay so uh jeff bought a loaded pick guard from me the cool paisley one with the clear pickups in it and uh he said that he noticed that the the pre-drilled holes for the neck aren't perfectly square the distance between the holes are the same, but it seems the holes on one side are a little higher towards the neck than the other side. I'm planning on using a fender neck that already has the holes drilled in it. Um, and I'm planning on using threaded inserts a la Texas Toast. Should I plug the holes in the body and re-drill them to match the neck or find a neck that isn't pre-drilled if you can get them like that? So, um, <clears throat> obviously... Using a pre-drilled, an undrilled neck would be awesome. But uh, if you already have that one, aren't the inserts going to be bigger than the holes in the neck anyway? Oh, I missed a super chat. I'm so sorry. Uh-oh. We got another one? Uh, I missed one. So, Ed, um, Billy in blues. Yes. Then another one that said awesome. Probably about our... Oh. Everybody got a crack out of. Uh, oh, 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 oh. They said it was worth the wait. Like that was, uh, and awesome. I was telling them that it was a painful wait for us though, because we've had them for a while. We've had them for, for the like two time, weeks. Yeah. And Matt and Chris just like set us up today, so that worked out yes. really nicely. Yes. Thank y'all. It did. Um, if you're gonna use inserts, in the, and you can ask uh, Matt about this. But I'm pretty sure that those inserts are bigger than the screw holes. So if the screw holes aren't lining up 100% perfect, can't you just drill it, drill your inserts in, and they will take up the difference? I don't, I don't know though because I haven't seen what I'm looking at. Um, you know, I haven't seen your 
your neck. So I'm not 100% sure there, but that's what I would do is I would put inserts in that are bigger. You know what I mean? So like if the hole is, you know, a little bit off, but the inserts are big, so then it would take up the difference and it wouldn't matter. You'd probably have to do it with a drill press though, because if you tried to do it with a hand drill, you'd probably just wander into the wrong spot. Joe Barth has an interesting question <clears throat> that maybe you all could get in the comments too and chat about the answer to this because there's no really right or wrong to this. He says, do you have any advice for really learning how to hear the difference between pickups? I love futzing around with all of this, but at the end of the day, a lot of it sounds just super samesy to me. <laughs> you this know, is an amazing comment. It is. It is. What would you all say? You know, I, here's, I'm going to tell you, I, I've been thinking about this question all day because I didn't really know how to answer it. So what I'm going to tell you is how I listen to different guitar tones. Cause I was actually working on some testing today, looking at some pickups. How am I going to make these particular pickups? And I was playing my Strat and I had these pickups in there and I was thinking, what am I listening for? Um, when I'm listening to a set of pickups and trying to figure out if they're good or not, or if I like them, you know what I mean? Now this is going to be subjective to everyone, but I'm going to listen to, is the high end, um, nice and sparkly and clear without being ear piercing. And is it going to be something that when I turn the tone knob down n adjusts away nicely? Or is it just going to go to complete mud super fast? Um, which can have a lot to do with the tone circuit and stuff, but this is my guitar, so I know it already. Um, the next thing I'm going to listen to is uh, the, the mid range. So like the honky nasally part. And how am I going to use this guitar? Am I going to play by myself all the time? Or am I going to play with other people? Because if I'm going to play with other people, I'm going to want that mid-range to be nice and nice and sharp and nice and kind of honky sounding. In fact, if I'm playing by myself, it might sound a little too honky. But at the same time, that's what sticks out in a mix. So that's pretty good. Um, on the low end, on the neck pickup, uh, when I play it again, if, is it going to have a nice crispy top end where it's not going to be a muddy mess that's going to get lost in next to the bass player? You know what I mean? Um, those are things that I personally listen for Those right off the top of my head. Obviously, is it noisy? Um, and then my next thing on top of that is when I play it with an amplifier, like I've got this little 20 watt Marshall. And if I play it like right on the edge of breakup with the knobs all at 10, it's got a nice brown sound to it. You know, that nice crunchy sound. And when I turn the volume down a little bit, how does the guitar behave? Because how the, how the amp, how the pickups, the, the frequency response of the pickups affects what frequencies hit the amp first and how they break up. So... When I turn my knob back, what does it do? Does it get muddy? Does it just get quieter with the same amount of drive? Does it actually clean up real nice? Um, do the mid range, does the mid range as I turn the volume down kind of go away and get a little smoother? Um, those are a few aspects that I look at when I'm looking at the quality of a pickup. This question actually came up um, <clears throat> in another random YouTube comment today. I was just scrolling and I saw it and they're like, how do you, what about this pickup that you put in this guitar to replace this other cheap one? What is better about it? And all of those kind of dynamics are what I listen for. And a, a, a cheap pickup, um, or not, okay, so a pickup that I don't like, I don't want to say cheap. <clears throat> <coughs> Excuse me. A pickup that I don't like, that, that I like less, um, is one that doesn't have those dynamics to it. You know, you'll you'll play a guitar sometimes, and you'll be playing it through the amp, and when you turn the volume down, the, the volume just goes down. 
It doesn't clean up at all. It still stays the same kind of amount of dynamics. Um, the bass side gets a little muddy and it gets lost. The treble side gets, you try to get some treble out of it and it just gets tinny and a little bit, you know, harsh. Like those things I, I don't like as much. So learning to hear that might be just playing more and just listening more. Um, and listening to all kinds of different guitar sounds and maybe doing some research on what, um, don't get, don't, I, I really am real careful how I say this. Cause I don't go down these crazy roads of like, I'm going to sound like a certain person or I'm going to make this pickup sound exactly like this person. But what I do a lot of times is I will look at the overall rig. I don't care about every pedal. I don't care about every little thing, but I'm just like, oh, okay. So that's a Strat into a Marshall. Oh, okay. That's a Les Paul into a, um, into a boogie, at least so I know what I'm starting with when I'm hearing it, you know, and of course they're going to add a bunch of stuff on top of it and it's going to get really processed because most people have pedal boards that are three miles wide. So, <clears throat> you know, but bass tone, I was just listening to some band yesterday in the Jeep with the top off <laughs> and I was thinking this mix is amazing and this guitar tone is amazing. It's that band who thinks they are Guns N' Roses. You know the one? Mm -mm. I can't remember. I'll have to think of it uh, and share it later. But these guys are, he, he was really heavily influenced by Guns N' Roses. And their Les Paul into a Marshall sound was like amazing. And I really like listened to that sound like in the mix and was like, what makes this humbucker sound so good? Because when I skip to the next song, it's just not even close. Like something so good here. So just listen. Listen a lot and play a lot. Um, that's all I can tell you. I think it's, that's it. Um, Zoltan says, and this is our last Patreon question. Zoltan says, have you ever dropped a vintage six screw strat trim and standard strat pick guard into an entry level Yamaha Pacifica? How easy, difficult would that be? I don't know because I've never done it, but here's what I'll tell you to look for. Make sure. Um, and you're on Patreon, so you saw the video about um, friction the other day and tuning stability. So that video for everybody else comes out on Tuesday. Monday. Uh, Monday. 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 Um, make sure that the trim block doesn't hit anywhere on the inside. And then the number one thing, uh, even more important than that, is that the screw spacing is correct. Um the six if it's a six screw tremolo you got to make sure that the screw spacing is right because it's not all the same um especially on a metric guitar it might be narrower so you just have to check that uh that would be the the big thing i would check for so we have one from youtube <clears throat> we have one question from youtube um brett wants to know are there any special considerations when converting a standard telly to a Nashville. Besides the routing, um, not really. I mean, and if it's a Squire, you want to make sure uh, that when you change from the square style switch to a Oak Grigsby round style blade switch, that um, the cavity is deep enough. That's the only thing you got to worry about. Some Some of those Squires have a, they're like milled and they have a little hump in the middle um, and it makes it hard to get that in there. So you have to go in there with a dremolo, a dremolo. <laughs> That's a new word. Is that like, uh, is that what Eddie Van Halen did when he was like playing with the drill and like doing stuff? It was, that dremolo. was a dremolo. Mm. Mm. Smooth. Yeah. Anyway, um, you'll just have to go in there with a dremel and clear that out if the switch bottoms out. So, that is everybody from Patreon and from YouTube. Now we get into the chat. All right. Can you believe we were trying to, like, build a strategy around this because we have been bombarded every week with, like, 
question, question, questions. Mm -hmm. And so far today, we've gotten one. Really? One. 25 minutes in, one. So, Ed Billy BN Blues mm -hmm. says, Dylan, is it possible to unhook the leads to your cabinet speakers and create an extension cab outlet while also retaining the combos speakers? <clears throat> You can, you have to be, uh, you have to make sure so actually the way you would do this is you would, um, you would wire it so that it would go into the cabinet that you're already using and then there would be wires that would come off of that and go to a second cabinet but your impedance would have to be correct so <clears throat> like in my little 20 watt Marshall here I have three different jacks that I can plug into I have a 4 an 8 and a 16 ohm jack on the back of here so if I was going to use two four ohm speakers in series then i would need to use the eight ohm output if i was going to use two four ohm speakers in pair uh two eight ohm speakers in parallel then i would use the four ohm output so speaker wiring is a whole thing and you can google diagrams on it um i have never actually done any videos on speaker wiring hmm. uh, that is crazy to me guess what but see the chat Sweet. Chris. Ah, oh, Chris Hendricks. What's up, dude? Adding to the whiskey fund. Curious, your thoughts on a 335 project. DAF for the neck and a center punch bridge playing blues and 90s pop punk. Absolutely, that would be my choice. Um, because the center punch in the bridge is a little hotter and it gives you that nice mid-range, so you're going to get like a... Um, well, you'll get that, like, like that ACDC SG kind of sound or like a hot P90 kind of sound. It's a humbucker, but good mid range for your gnarly punky stuff. And then the DAF is going to be super smooth, nice clarity. And that's going to be proper, proper, like blues and woman tone neck pickup deal. Absolutely. That's going to be killer. Yeah. Thank you for the super chat too, Chris. Uh, that's a really, really good idea in a 335. I want that, actually. <laughs> <laughs> that would be awesome. Awesome. So Jeffrey Egan asked, if you never use the trim, would you block it or just leave it as is? I would use it. <laughs> he said if you never use it. I know. I would start <laughs> using it. Um, I never block a trim. Because I do use it, even if I don't use the arm, I actually will use my palm. Um, that being said, my strat was giving me gnarly problems today. Um, I think it was just the strings, though. Um, I would just tighten up the screws and have it sit against the body. That's what I would do. I wouldn't put anything in there. Um, I wouldn't modify the guitar. I would just tighten the screws up on the springs and so that the body it's flat against the body that's what i would do you know and you could get it tight enough um where it's without being insane where it's not going to rattle like make sure it's all the way down because if it's not then it'll it'll just sit there and vibrate against the body you could just a little thing here is you could put a piece of masking tape on the bottom of the tremolo plate so that as long as you can't see it, because this would be cheesy if you could see it. But I've done this before. So, because masking tape will act as like a, it's not as thick as felt, but it kind of does the same thing. You know what I mean? So if there's any little gap there, but just tighten it up. Because some of those tremolos aren't 100% flat going all the way across. And maybe your body's not flat either, you know, from wood grain and stuff. So put a piece of masking tape on the back of it. Smack that thing back down, like with the screws as tight as it'll go. You'll be all right. 
I'm terrible with names, so I apologize if I pronounce your name wrong ever. Um, but I had to say this comment because Sean Ammonheiser said, I'm having a hard time finding a Dremolo. Can you post a link? <clears throat> <laughs> and then Fred also said, so to go with that, like, ch -ch -ch. Fred said we need a rim shot symbol crash to emphasize jokes. And I was like, mm, we're not that funny, are we? We have that. I don't think we we're that, that funny. Uh, we have that. It is right here. Oh my gosh. Hang on. I don't know what's happening now. <laughs> Just so you know, the way we've got this set we're up, we can't hear it. <laughs> Yeah, you can hear it. So we're just laughing. We're just laughing for no reason. Anyway. I mean, we did listen to them first, so we know what they sound like. Right. <clears throat> okay. Right. Dan Andratus says, mm -hmm. "I finished my first guitar a bit ago. Congratulations! Cool. By the way, a telly. I have rewired five times, changed pots, and have no sound. No sound. So I must be grounding out somewhere. Suggestions? You must be grounding out somewhere." Um, so I'm going to do a video. Actually, this is, I think this is the video I'm going to shoot tomorrow. Um, uh, actually, yeah, I, I might be cause I got to change some pickups in a strat. So I'm going to do a video where we dive into, um, oh, you haven't seen the video leading up to this. So tomorrow's video is, uh, tomorrow's video is tools good tools that you should buy to work on your guitar starting from cleaning and maintenance all the way to making pickups and crazy stuff um everything i own and that i use i set it all up on the picnic table it's super fun the reason it's relevant to your question is because the next video i want to do kind of in that is i want to go into a very specific with the meter zoomed in on stuff troubleshooting for somebody like you who has rewired a guitar and doesn't know where to start to fix it because they don't have sound so brief synopsis of this would be get yourself a multimeter um in tomorrow's video there will be links to stuff in the description get yourself a multimeter and check your pickups to make sure that they are not dead then the next thing i did, would do is check to see if you have the resistance of your pickups in each of the settings where the wires hook up the switch to the volume pot and make sure you have your neck your middle and your bridge uh, that's relatively the same resistance and then I would go out to your output jack and I would stick literally just a, a pedal board cable like this long Stick it into the output jack, turn all your knobs all the way to 10, and I would put a meter across there and see if you have relatively the same um, resistance from neck, middle to bridge. So what you're doing is you're first you're checking your pickups. Then check on the other side of the switch. Chances are there will be something wrong in between there. If there's nothing wrong in between there and it makes it all the way to the output jack, um, then then you're good. But the thing is, is you don't have anything at all. So chances are something major, i.e. the volume pot, because it affects everything in the guitar or the output jack or the wires going to it. Um, or the switch wire, the wire that goes from the switch to the volume pot. One of those three things, output jack, volume pot, wire that goes from the switch to the volume pot one of those things is touching a ground and killing everything like a kill switch maybe we have another super chat oh, sweet. <clears throat> oh music stuff do you think with a proper nut and locking tuners that locking nuts are obsolete um Proper not unlocking. Uh, so, music stuff, I will answer that in just one second. I just want to finish on this other thing. Uh, I will say that uh, 
sounds like you've got something either touching the ground that's not supposed to be, or you've got something completely missing, hooked up to the wrong place. Um, but we'll dive deep into that into our next video, and hopefully it'll help you out. Hopefully it'll help you out. Um, for those of you that have problems like that, you can bring that project and your guitar to our Patreon workshop on the last Sunday of this month, which is this coming Sunday. So, and we work on those projects together. It's a level on Patreon. You can see it at patreon.com slash Dylan Talks Tone, and you can see the, um, there's a level there. It's like the $45 level. I don't care if you only do it for one month. It doesn't matter. It's okay. You can still come hang out, and we, we try to help with those sorts of things, um, amongst other, all kinds of other things. Um, so Music Stuff wants to know in his super chat, thank you so much for that, says, um, do you think with a proper nut and locking tuners that locking nuts are obsolete? So <clears throat> I think that those are two different things. I think locking tuners and locking nuts are two different things that do two different jobs. Um, a lot of folks think that locking tuners mean tuning stability because they're lock tuners that lock. The only addition to tuning stability that locking tuners give you is that you don't have a bunch of wraps on the post because when you put strings into a, a locking tuner, you just pull it through and you lock it. You don't wrap anything around. Um, if you do your tuners correctly with you know three wraps or so and you know i don't do that stupid tying a knot thing and all that but if you do three wraps and it's nice and neat um, then you won't have tuning stability problems on your tuners locking tuners are a convenience for string changes that's what they're really for because i can change strings on a locking tuner guitar well i could probably change on just as fast the other way too but um it's it's easier and faster. And when you have like a Bigsby and you don't have enough hands to hold everything, it's more convenient. You know what I mean? But it's not necessarily a tuning stability thing. The locking nut is for Floyd Roses. It's for using like shortening and lengthening the scale length and expecting it to come back to zero. Um, that's what a locking nut is for. Locking tuners won't do that because the strings will still slack against the tuners and pop back. Um, and even if you install the strings correctly on locking tuners, they'll still uh, have maybe a half a round on them or something. So they'll still move a little bit. A locking nut locks the scale length and that's it. So two different purposes. So no, they would not be obsolete. One would not make the other obsolete. That would be my, yeah, long answer, but I wanted to be thorough about that because people hear a word and they think it's supposed to do something and it doesn't, you know, like that's. Yeah. So Ivan Shank says, I'm planning on trying my hand at winding pickups. What entry level winder do you suggest? Um, I know that you saw the video, Ivan tomorrow's video because you are a YouTube member and a Patreon patron so I know you saw it already maybe he didn't watch it <clears throat> I know he did Ivan watches everything as soon as it hits I would say if you have to save money buy the Shatten but and it's a huge but I would buy the Mojo Tone Winder because I know they're 500 bucks. He's all in, y'all. I know they're 500 bucks and I know they're expensive and I know I do this for a living and not most people do. But, and this is a big but, the level of stress <laughs> and the level of fiddliness and the level I've been working Even after all these years of doing it. Yes. Yeah. I do this every day. Um, and I sat down at that Mojo Tone Winder and I was just like. And he didn't want to like it. I did not. Just going to say. Well, 
I, if they followed the channel for any time at all, they know that I've said over and over, <laughs> I'm never going to buy one of those because I didn't want a gear driven one. Yeah. And I was wrong. I don't think it's gear driven. Uh. When I was at NAM one year, they had their booth and I went there and I felt it and I, you know, and I was like, I don't like this thing. But of course, NAM, NAM doesn't tell you anything except you're going to be sick in two days. Like, it doesn't tell you anything. It's too loud. It's not the right place. You know, it's not set at the right height for you and all that stuff. And, I, you know, first of all, I think now, especially now that I've been into RC cars, I think it's a brushless, like a censored brushless electric motor because it sounds exactly like my RC car. And the, the controllability of the motor is exactly like my RC car. And when you shut it off, it stops like it has it has motor braking. Um, so I believe it's a censored brushless motor. That's what it feels like. And once it's set up, uh, super chat. Oh, Adam Roan. Once it's set up, it's amazing. And I would buy it. And the Shatten is not enough cheaper to be dealing with 3M tape and pickups flying off and all that. I have a full review coming out on it on the Mojo Tone one. It's I've only wound like 30 pickups on it or something, but it is really, really good. Adam, were my pickups dead on my Parker? I never asked, and I'm curious. Uh, they were not. It just made me realize, I don't know if I put them back in the package for him. I might still have those, um, which I'll send to you. <laughs> um, we built a pick guard for him. But he sent me the whole thing and had oh, the oh, old oh. pickups in it and everything. So, you know, yeah. <clears throat> um, no, I don't think they were dead. I don't think they were dead. Um, because I did some basic troubleshooting before I took it all apart because I didn't know what I was doing. Um, he, he sent me a Parker Nightfly SL, I believe, or S. I'm not, a f I'm not familiar with Parker nomenclature, but um, big word, by the way pretty late nomenclature i think dremolo I, I mean really how could i put dremolo on a shirt i don't know can you do like a shadow of the eddie van halen thing since you said that was like a i could um anyway so <laughs> welcome to our life yes this is how random we really are um and this is why i wanted you to do these with me because it's a lot more fun when i'm I'm talking to you, but I'm all, it just, it helps with the interaction of everything. Um, anyway, so those, those Parker pickups, I'll send them to you. I'm pretty sure that they were okay. I can't, it's been weeks. There's been many, many pickups since then. And I can't remember. Um, but I think they were okay. What do we got next? Um, Mark Hot mm -hmm. ask, can you use a push pull pot to turn on your LED light pickups? <laughs> I wish that thing was sitting here closer. Absolutely you can. Um Yes. I actually have an LED guitar with that very same setup. Um that we're working on right now. We have a project going on right now. Um yeah, you can. Just make sure that you use resistored. So I've done this before. Um, I did a collaboration with a company in Las Vegas and we built some crazy, crazy guitar with light up pickups in it. <clears throat> you just want to use a resistorless or resistored. They have these little LEDs with these tiny resistors built in and it cuts down on the noise that they make because they will make a tiny little bit of noise. Um, not as much as you would think. And actually, you, you, most people wouldn't really be able to hear it. But just to be fair, it does make a tiny little bit of noise. But these things minimize that. So it's almost a non-issue. Um, but yeah, totally do that. LEDs and everything. LEDs should be in everything. That is my opinion. Doug Santaniello. What do you think of the EMG kits that are solderless? Have they been around long enough to know how the plugins work in the long run? Yes, they have. <clears throat> they have been around a long, long time, and they're really good. And they, um, I actually have a set of uh, 
What are those things? Bloody Fingers guy. Zach Wild. Uh, I have a set of Zach Wild uh, pickups. And they're really, really nice. And yeah, they work awesome. I think the thing with solderless pickups is that's a... Uh, I hate to get accused of ageism. But that is literally a thing. Like, because they weren't made like that a long time ago, people think they're bad. But they're really good. And I've actually started making solderless stuff for tellies because, and strats because it is so good. They are, it's awesome. There's no loss in resistance, you know, like no resistance issues if you use good connectors. There's no corrosion problems. I mean, everybody thinks corrosion problems. But, I mean, unless you're playing on Myrtle Beach in a rainstorm or in a windstorm and you have salt water or like you're playing in a pool or you leave your guitar outside which nobody does um there's not going to be corrosion problems i mean unless your sweat is so acidic that it like drips down into the guitar and ruins everything but you're going to have other problems before that um so yeah i wouldn't worry about solderless stuff uh, I don't know why you're putting EMGs in anything. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, um, but I, yeah, I would totally, I would totally go with them. I think they're awesome. I wish everything was solderless. I think it's, it's great. I mean, I like soldering, but for convenience purposes, I'm pretty sure I would have more customers. Like people, more people would buy stuff if they didn't have to solder. If you could just plug and play and it was easy. I was thinking that today on my test strat that I might glue some of those connectors to the back mm -hmm. of that pit guard mm -hmm. because I take pickups in and out of that guitar so many times all the time that it would be nice to not have to solder the pickups in every time. So I think I'm going to do that on my own personal guitar. Cool. Keith H says, Hey Dylan, I'm the guy with the white strat roadhouse, just like yours. So I may be ordering some pickups for my Squire. It has a better neck. LOL. Thanks. So not really a question, but. Dude, that is no joke. That roadhouse strat neck was garbage. It took me. I was really bummed out about that. And actually, I have a friend who was involved with that guitar during the design and all that <clears throat> and he was like yeah that era of whatever blah 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 well, you know it's whatever they they come in and out but yeah squire necks are so good i actually recommended to um one of our youtube members barry i don't think he's on tonight but he just got um oh i wanted to mention something that happened to barry tonight he just got a texted me last week and he said i want to upgrade my strat which one should i get there's so many squires blah 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 blah. so he got a 60s classic vibe squire in red and it is a sick guitar and he got it in the mail today i just want to give him a shout out because uh, he watches our stuff and he's a youtube member um and he um got it got it in the mail and he sent me a picture of it and he's like, Sweetwater tells me that I have to wait 24 hours before I take this thing out of the box. And I was like, dude, no. Take it out of the box. It'll be fine. Um, and so I was explaining to him and to you that, you know, certain finishes, obviously, crazy nitro finishes, you know, vintage style nitro finishes, as well as some glues in maybe some acoustic guitars and stuff might need a little bit of acclimation but we're in the time of year now where you know most parts of the country are fairly temperate you know they're within 20 or 30 degrees of nighttime daytime nighttime daytime, daytime. um you know every day so you know you're not talking about 20 below zero and then bringing it into the house and it'd be 80 degrees or whatever um that's that's not really happening right now and most modern guitars with urethane finishes and normal stuff, electric guitars especially, don't even worry about it. I mean, you could say what, you can do what it says on the box if you want to 100% play it safe. You have the patience. And you have the patience, but who waits 24 hours? 
to take their brand new guitar out of the box. Mm -mm. Not me. Not me. Carl Engstrom. Hey, Again, Carl. I apologize if I can't say your name right. Are the $50 hand inductor winders worth modifying? I have seen those and I actually bought a Zebco fishing reel, which is basically the same thing without the counter, uh, to see how feasible it would be to make a hand winder that would work. So let's get back to that whole what pickup winder should you buy thing? Because if you want to try to do this, and you want to try to make a pickup that works. Um, it might be worth actually buying the right tools. For two reasons. One, if you try it and you don't want to do it, I can guarantee you that you'll be able to sell it. Because there's a ton of folks out there that want to try it. Um, will you take maybe a little loss? Maybe, but that's... I, I will just chalk that up to education costs and you know what I mean? Like I wanted to learn and it cost me a hundred bucks and you know what I mean? Um, the reason I say that is because if you want it to work and you want to have a good experience and you're, you are thinking that you might want to try this as a hobby or even to make money, if you have a bad experience, you will hardly ever get anything that works and you'll be hating yourself the entire time it's like playing a cheap guitar like a bad i don't mean i don't mean a cheap guitar i mean like a bad guitar like a glary or like a colos it's like that <laughs> like if the guitars that i run over it's like playing one of those like you would hate the experience and then your fingers would hurt and you would give up on day two and then nothing would ever happen it's the same thing with this. If you punish yourself to try to learn the thing, then you never have a result that's worth doing anything with. And you don't really get an experience of what it's really like to wind something and the satisfaction of doing it. And I think it's worth the investment of at least a Shatten kit and build it yourself. Get something real. Cool. Super chat. Oh, sweet. Keith. Thanks for sharing your knowledge, and you guys look very happy. Nice to see it on the internet. We are very happy. It's that fake internet happy, though. Yeah. Just saying. Is it? Yeah, we're going to fight like yep. crazy as soon as we're done. <clears throat> That's like a long-standing joke with us. Because people... We have literally had people tell us that we're faking. <laughs> no, we've <laughs> or literally assume. had people that we met and like, oh, you really are just like you are on the internet. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Yes, yes, we are. <laughs> <clears throat> yes, we are. We're this goofy and we're this whatever. And I have decided um, that I am going to start having fun on this channel. I got into a mental state, I think, by letting like the comments and everything drive my content so hard that this thing got so nerdy and so, and you know how people are about guitar stuff. They want to argue about it all the time and like, you're wrong and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, Ugh. being super sciencey about all of this kind of painted me, me into a corner. And then I was like, I don't want to be that, like this should be fun, right? So for those of you that have not followed me for very long and seen me do some kind of goofy things lately, that's why, because I really am goofy like that. I'm not, I'm not some super boring brainiac person, and I, I feel like our YouTube channel looks like that because I let the comments and all the people who are like that um, drive my content too much, and I'm like, no, we're going to start having some more fun. That's why we changed this up. That's why we brought her back. That's why we're, I mean, we're just, you'll see. It's happening right now. Literally. Literally in front of your face live live okay um not a question but jeffrey mcrickard said dylan you could do dr dremolo on your lab coat <laughs> <laughs> he comes up with some really good ideas well people want to know what happened to the lab coat man that was I mean, how many months ago is that now i know i haven't found a good one 
So we like, have looked. We have looked. And <laughs> we've done everything from going into uniform stores to looking on the internet. I was really trying to find um, a lab coat that I could afford to buy. We could make a few of them at a time. And we could actually sell them as merch in like a, a Dylan Tuxtone lab coat thing. Um, but I, because I know people would buy them, but I just haven't, I haven't found the right thing yet. Um, but we have, but we were in some outlet place <laughs> and I was like, we're going to go in here and look at scrubs and see if I could find something that would work. But, but she didn't want no scrubs. So what else we got? Big tone. This created a nice conversation, but he did ask the question. So I was just going to ask it anyway. Big tone says, are solder fumes harmful? Yep, they are. Yep, they are. <laughs> That's what everybody yep, told me. They them are. To. <laughs> yep, they are. Oh my gosh. Yeah, um, I <laughs> I don't want to do this until I'm eighty. I'm just gonna say that. Like, I don't wanna solder stuff every day until I'm eighty years old. Cause I I don't know if I'm gonna get the cancer or if I'm gonna get Well, we do also have the least sealed space also so motorhomes are pretty drafty. well ventilated yeah. there's a window right behind i sit actually i sit right here while i'm soldering stuff there's a window behind me and the door is right there we got so, a super chat oh sweet it doesn't say anything jason albert just wanted to give us and we have another super chat good grief you guys are awesome man kevin md watch for questions they in don't even they... say anything i know but maybe they didn't know how to do it or something yeah if you had a question jason or kevin let me know i don't know if it did come through or if you the just super chat sound to... effect is bad oh i think we, it's awesome we love it we love it i don't care i love it's it fun we tried to find a um i tried to find like a google a uh, google like a bugle sound but that was the closest thing i could find i thought it was pretty good oh and here's the thing is I was going to use a cha-ching sound, but I didn't want... That sounds dumb. Like, oh, yeah, your money. That's Because that's not why it's there. That's not what it's for. Um, so we were trying to figure out ways. Fred says there's used work clothes stores where he's at that has tons of lab coats for cheap. Yeah, I know. I, oh, welding jacket. Lab coat length welding ooh, jackets. I never thought of that. A welding jacket would be a great idea, too. It would yeah. be a little more heavy duty. Yeah. Jason said, this reminds him of music and mascara. We're still that. That's, we're still there. We're on the same couch. Yep. In the same motorhome. Somebody said we need to bring back Matt and Chris, because that made it fun. <laughs> I don't know what you did with Matt's head. Did I got you Matt. you throw it? No. I'm standing on him right here. Oh. So for those of you who weren't here earlier. Yeah. 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 Mine had a glare. I have to like aim it different or something. So I'm Matt and I yell a lot and uh, I make guitars on the Google uh, and I have uh, been doing it a long time no matter what anybody says. Yeah. And Chris just says that a lot all the time. Like every time I say something. Yeah. That's all he says. Yeah. So, just a little fun. Yeah. Oh. Cherokee workwear. Ooh. Super chat. Doc. Cherokee workwear. That's a good idea. That stuff's pretty awesome. I'll look into it. I'll look into it and see what we can come up with. Um, because, yes. And aprons, too. I thought about aprons. Uh, the lab coat thing is more funny because of the whole like myth buster thing because that's what kind of what we do around here a lot of and we go back to a lot of the physics side of stuff so the whole lab coat thing was something that I wanted to kind of stick with so all right so we got any more questions coming yeah. in yeah Dave Clark said hey Dylan I'm sorry. He said hi, actually. I just said hey. Hi, Dylan. I'm late to the show, but how's the great guitar build-off guitar going? <clears throat> um, it is good. In 
Monday's video, you will see part of it being used for something else. <laughs> um, and, <coughs> excuse me, and I think um, I have some progress coming on it. Uh, we didn't shoot a typical blog this week, um, but in next week's vlog, you will see the pieces and parts. I've got some stuff to, sh to show you um, next week, so that'll be awesome. We've got another super chat. <laughs> Thank you, by the way, for asking. Jeffrey McRickard says, I was going to invest in Dogecoin, but I get a better return here. Keep the kazoo sound and superimpose the kazoo kid's face every time it goes off. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Can we do that? We could. I would have to get the graphic and we would have to make it. I, I don't even know what he's talking about, so I'm just super no, curious would, what that have even to make is. It. Okay. Yeah, we would have to make it. Um, Somebody has said you need pocket protectors. So I was that yeah, I was gonna say if we do um, lab coats, we're gonna put pocket protectors. And you in can it. be pickup man. You can be Joe Diffie. <laughs> Something women like. Pickup man. <laughs> Exactly. All right. Um, <laughs> yeah, screw that Dodge coin. I am losing my butt on that right now. Yeah, we're still invested. <laughs> yeah. Not screwed. Yeah. You all need to go Dollar. buy that junk. Dollar, baby. You need to go buy that junk right now because I need that junk to come back up. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, Fat Philosopher joined us from Japan. Dude, Thank you. Are what you time is it there? It, it's daytime. He's working. Oh, okay, okay. He was because he was one of the people that I knew watched. Yeah, and would be affected greatly by well, this he's time working, change. So okay, okay. Fat philosopher asks, "Are you a fan of EMGs fifty seven slash sixty six? I do not know enough about them because I have not really ever used them. Do you know that uh, when a viewer bought me that pair? Of Zach Wild pickups, it was the first pair I've ever owned. I've never used them. Um, I I just I'm not a fan in the strictest sense of the word. Uh, I'm not a person who would say go so far and say I don't like EMGs because if you say you don't like EMGs, any of you, I know you're lying, and here's why: because you like lots of music that was made with EMGs. So you can't say you hate them. Uh, everybody's like, I hate EMGs, they're blah, blah, blah. But you like a lot of music that was made with those pickups. So I know you don't hate them. But f for playing purposes and me connecting with it, um, I, EMGs in general are fun to have, but not my first choice, if that makes sense. Like, it's super fun to play those zach wild 8185s into a marshall and like super shred or like gent or like do stuff for fun but that's not my normal playing style so i don't really connect with it and as far as the other models are concerned i don't know them enough to give you any input because like i said i haven't used them i just am not experienced carl engstrom said where's dylan on nasdaq <laughs> i guess since Jeffrey McRickard said he had a better return here. <laughs> um, I mean, if I was publicly traded, let me tell you, uh, this would look a little different. Yes. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. When you guys want me to, when we're in a position to, for the IPO, uh, things will look a little different. I'm telling you. Hall of... Canon said, do you think a tracking device like the Apple AirTag in a control cavity would have too much interference noise to be useful? I am going to buy one and we are going to do that test. This is something that I have actually thought about. And actually, um, not just that. I have actually thought about buying one of those and drilling a hole in the, po the neck pocket and putting it underneath the neck so that it cannot be taken out by somebody. Like, they, when, there's no way that they would know that it was in there. Um, 
I know that Gibson uses an RF tag underneath their fretboards. So in, uh, the neck and then there's an RF tag. It's kind of like the one so you don't steal CDs at Barnes & Noble. You know, it's like that little metal thing. Mm -hmm. um, which, you know, if you go into... If you just... What's a CD? If you go into Barnes & Noble and they have those things, you can just take a magnet like this and it kills it. Oh, what is a CD? Um, it's something you shoot at at the pistol range. <laughs> no, those are AOL discs. Remember the old school AOL discs that used to come on a CD? You get them in the no, mail like every I'm two much weeks. Too young for that. Whatever. That's what you took to the shooting range. Okay. <clears throat> uh, what was the question? <laughs> What was the question? I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, tracking talking, device. Tracking air devices. Tag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Air tags. So um, the RF things, in Gibson uses them to track stuff to get around the factory. Like, so they know where everything is in production and stuff. Um, and I know that there are, that was another company at NAM one time that I was actually looking at buying the technology. It was, you could become a dealer and put these little, like, covid vaccines inside your guitar so that you could track yes the, i remember, remember that. they were like a little yeah, yeah. capsule and you drilled a hole past the strap pin mm -hmm. and I you with that. a syringe thing and you put it in there and you pulled it out and then you put your strap pin back in and you could track your guitar that way um and they lasted a long time and blah 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 but when it came to uh, Maybe like three or four months later, I got the card out and I started calling the company. I tried to get in touch with somebody. I wanted to become a dealer. I wanted to do a series of videos on it. And they disappeared off the face of the earth. I can't find them anywhere. And I tried, nobody would call me back, nothing. So these AirTag things, I think that'd be a great idea. And I actually want to go leave the guitar somewhere. Like, um, I want to do it and I want to leave it somewhere. Not like, you know, I know where it is, like at a friend's house or something and see if I can see it from across town or whatever, because I think that will be amazing. Cause the way those things work is if another iPhone goes next to it, it reverse secure pings. So does it work with other iPhones yes. also, not just air tags? So even though it's new, the technology is still going to work. 11 pro and 11 and later. Okay. Cause so they have lose some things in nice parts of town. Right. I'm just kidding. I think everybody's got a nice cell phone these days. I don't know. Did Dylan ever do anything with that aluminum guitar body? Um, I gave that to... Oh, the black one might still be in storage. The white one, the white guitar, I gave to somebody. I gave it to... Um, do you remember when we had our 50,000 subscriber giveaway and we accidentally had two winners because I thought the first one was a fake? Well, it turns out she was not. It turns out she was real. So then I ended up having to give away two guitars and I gave her the choice. I had a couple of guitars and I, she wanted that one. So I, I sent her that one. Yep. I don't know where the black body is though. It's somewhere. I think it's in storage maybe. Well, Fred was asking, and I think Fred asked originally also, by the way. Let me see what I can do on that, Fred. Let me see if I can find that thing. I think I know where it is. Um, I'm not sure what this is, so I'm just going to read it. Okay. Um, Big Tone says, in regards to your lace sensor video, because that must be really old if you have one, you showed that they have cheap vinyl magnets. I'm assuming that the magnets are charged prior to installation. If they lose magnetism, how are they recharged? It is very unlikely that synthetic ceramic magnets will lose a charge. They do not, they are not charged the same way an El Nico magnet is charged. Um, so while an El Nico magnet can lose charge over time slowly, a percentage per year times 50 years, and it goes down a little bit, right? Um, ceramic magnets don't really do that in the same way. So the likelihood is that they will not. 
Um, yeah, that's that's really the thing. And even Al Nico Magnus don't really discharge that fast. Not as fast as everybody says. I mean, everybody's like, this old guitar discharged. Yeah, but it's 70 years old. Like, you know what I mean? So. Is discharge as good a word as moist? Hmm. <laughs> What's worse, discharge or moist? I don't know. Some words just sound icky. Moist is probably worse. Although I like saying it on purpose because I just like saying people. Because there are some people that have some serious aversion. They do. Yeah. Well, we're all caught up and it's 10 after 9. Okay. Awesome. That is uh, a f- good first try at this 8 o'clock thing. Yeah. I know that... It's a new time period, and I know everybody's still figuring it but out. We did see some new faces. So we thanks did. For being that here. is the idea. I was hoping that most everybody that already followed us could still follow us to the eight o'clock time slot, and that there would be some new faces that maybe couldn't make it before. And that appears to be what happened. So I really appreciate it. Thanks a lot too for putting up with all of our messing around because we like doing stuff. You want to Together, take one more? yeah, let's do one more. All right, people are really grossed out by us talking about that too, and I'm like cracking up over here. Um, Hall of Cannons asked, Any recommendations for a good soapbox style P base pickup? I've got a Schecter, and I'm thinking of changing either the pickups or the active EQ. Um, <clears throat> no, I, I honestly don't, and I'll tell you why. I've tried. I do not. I have not ever found good hardware that I would feel comfortable selling. And so I, if I can't make it, I have not done a lot of research on it, if that makes sense. At least with those. Um, The closest thing I've ever done to one of those is we did at this gnarly thing where we took two jazz bass pickups and put them next to each other on the same bass plate and made a humbucker out of it. Remember those? Mm-hmm. That was on a five string, but th- that was really cool. Um, Cause I think that'll kind of fit. So that, that might be a fun science project. Cool. Well, we squeezed the last one in, so we're still caught up, but this was fun. Awesome. Thank you so much, everybody. I really appreciate uh, y'all coming out for this and make sure. Oh, the other thing is um, the daytime videos are going to be at noon because of the way YouTube works, really, more than anything. So um, tomorrow's video is at noon. I think you're going to really dig it. It's a little bit long, but uh, we get really dive into tools. Been getting this question a lot, like, what tools do I need? So here's what I did. We took four, we did four sections. We did, and I have a picnic table out there and I set everything in sections. So the first section is um, like just setup and maintenance, like basic, every guitar player should have this stuff in their guitar case kind of stuff. Then the next thing was like modification. So soldering iron and you know, like that kind of stuff. Um, and then the next thing was fret work. And then the next thing was pickup making. And the idea is the further we got down the table, you would have all this other stuff and you would just add these things to it to be able to do more and more with your guitar and with your repairs and with your mods and with all that kind of stuff. So um, I'm really, really stoked that that video came out that way and it's coming out tomorrow. You're going to dig it. And then in the comments of the video is going to be links to everything and this is all stuff i actually own i actually use and i've actually tested and there's a couple of tools in there where i'll tell you i wear this out every year and have to buy a new one this one i spend a little more money so that i wouldn't wear it out you know what i mean like i i really kind of dive deep into all that so uh that and also don't forget that if you want to watch the replay or hear the replay of this in a podcast form um it will be up as an audio podcast right now on spotify and google itunes is coming so that's it awesome thanks for hanging out